Hey everyone, excited to be back for this week's edition of Frequently Asked Questions for Commercial Real Estate. In today's video, what I want to do is talk about a social media platform that is extremely pertinent to commercial real estate professionals across the nation, and that is LinkedIn. Uh, we're currently in the midst of a LinkedIn Commercial Real Estate Challenge hosted by Yona Weiss. Essentially what this is, is it's a challenge whereby many professionals across the nation come together uh, to engage with one another to help build our network and presence with, with on, in the platform. And I thought, what better way to be able to talk about the things that we're doing uh, to grow our network than by creating a video about it. So in today's video, we're going to go through some of the top strategies that you can utilize to grow your presence on LinkedIn, whether you're a commercial real estate broker, lender, investor, etc. So before we dive into this video, I would really appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So now that you've done that, go ahead and like and subscribe below. Let's go ahead and dive right into this video. All right, so first off, in order to grow your LinkedIn presence, you need to first have your LinkedIn profile squared away. So the first and foremost thing you need to do is to complete your LinkedIn profile. That means including your name, position, uh, there's also subtext within the the profile that allows you to put, you know, uh, if you're a host of a podcast, I'd encourage you to put that there. Uh, different types of uh, investments. If you're an investor, consider putting, you know, if you're a retail investor, put uh, retail investment property, uh, seeking retail investment property, anything that uh, that kind of informs people about what you do on a regular basis. Along with that, there's a featured section within LinkedIn. Uh, in my feature section, I put a free copy of my uh, digital copy of my book so that I can capture emails. I also include different meetups that I run, the podcast that I host as well. Uh, so it's just different ways for people to engage with you and potentially capture information so you can maintain con contact with them over time. Along with that, the rest of your profile includes positions and titles. Be sure to provide some descriptions and context within that as well because that tells your story. So if you're an investor, the, the different things that you've invested in, the, the assets under management you have helps to paint a picture of you so that, you know, whoever you're trying to target, let's say it's uh, someone you're looking to gain cap or raise capital from, they can see your history and maybe trust you more as they, as they go down through the process of potentially selecting you as a GP for a, a deal, essentially. Along with that, I also encourage you to reach out to past clients or uh, past uh, associates to be able to get recommendations. Uh, again, people do look at recommendations. They do try to get a feel for you as a person and, and your character. So having a lot of recommendations that indicate your, your aptitude and your integrity are, are of value as well. So step number one is to complete your LinkedIn profile and utilize those components of the profile to be able to showcase what you're, what you're about. So that's number one. Number two is posting content regularly. Now, the, the regularity with which you post content is very subjective. I try to post at least several times a week. Uh, the type of content that you can post include maybe frequently asked questions, similar to like this video right now. Each week I post a video talking uh, about a particular topic within commercial real estate that is of value to a broad audience. And this is something that I post every single Monday. Along with that, you can post interviews if you're running a podcast. That's what we do every Tuesday as we release a podcast episode for the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. You can also post relevant art articles or different infographics that you see online and then provide some form of insight regarding what you think about this particular topic. So these are just some of the ideas that you can utilize in order to post content regularly. Uh, you can also branch off of other people's posts. If, the, if you see an enlightening post, you can share that post and then provide your own twist as far as what your interpretation of that post is, what, is as well. So Creating a content calendar is also very beneficial when it comes to this sort of thing. I usually have an Excel spreadsheet where I post things uh, in particular that I'd like to post for the week, and you can copy paste into your LinkedIn profile, and there you have it. You have regular content that you post. So that's step number two is to regularly post content. At first, you're not going to really have a lot of engagement, but over time, if, you can, if you're consistent about it, you will slowly start to build engagement. And then finally, number three, which I think is the most important thing is to regularly engage with those individuals that you want to target and also thought leaders within your industry. So those individuals who have already a broad network of individuals who engage with their content on a regular basis and their industry experts, I would highly encourage you to target them as far as commenting on their posts, liking their statuses, and maybe sharing their content as well. What I've done, uh, and I, I actually utilized, uh, I worked with Judy Fox, who's a LinkedIn coach, and she encouraged me to do this, is to create a top 20 list. So this is these are individuals that 
are either industry experts or people you're trying to target and include them in a Excel spreadsheet and then individually go to their profiles periodically throughout the week to see different statuses that they've shared. Once you have a status that they've actually shared, go to that status and provide some interesting insights regarding the things that they post. So if they post about the inflation rate being 6% or 7% for this for year over year, provide some insights. Talk about, you know, what you think is going to happen over the next, you know, year, two, three, five, you know, so provide some interesting insights on the statuses that they post and regularly engage with those individuals. Now, there's two reasons why this is beneficial. Number one is because they will naturally know who you are after a while, especially if you continue to engage with them. And they in turn will, will likely engage with your content as well. And not only that, but the individuals who engage with their post with them being thought leaders or, or people you're trying to target will now also uh, know who you are and potentially engage with you as well. So there are two benefits of actually engaging with those individuals that are in your top 20 list. What I typically do is I set aside, you know, 20 to 30 minutes in the morning to post five comments and engage with one of those, the, the top 20 individuals. And I try to hit those top 20 individuals throughout the course of a week. So that's why you need to engage with people who regularly post content. And then number three, final thing that I want to share with you guys is leveraging LinkedIn groups. Now, this is an extremely powerful tool. If you can start a LinkedIn group for a particular topic and then also in engage with industry experts out there to be able to interview them and facilitate an environment whereby people can network and also learn interesting things about the industry, I've, I've actually had extreme success with this. I started a, a, a meetup called the Commercial Real Estate 101 meetup and created a LinkedIn group as a result. And I've been able to build it up to almost 650 followers now. And we regularly get in excess of 40 people on the Zoom calls. And we also create that into a, a video content as well, which we share on the YouTube channel. So there's different prongs that, that, that you can approach with that strategy that can broaden your reach and broaden your network over time. So those are the three key strategies that I think you can utilize in order to, number one, establish a LinkedIn presence, and number two, grow your presence over time, especially pertaining to commercial real estate. I hope you gained some value from this video. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message. If you're in Louisville, Kentucky, or the surrounding areas and you're looking for commercial property, again, if you're looking to buy, sell, or lease commercial property, feel free to reach out to me. I'm easy to get a hold of. My number is 502 536 7315 or you can reach me via email at rafaelcrasantigroup.com. Again, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week.